before I say anything about the facts of last night's mass shooting in this community, and before any broader thoughts, I want to say something to the people of King Sessing. The pain and the trauma that you are feeling right now, it's not normal. And you shouldn't have to get used to it. I don't want you to think that we in this city are ever going to get used to it. Each and every one of you in this community, the mothers, the fathers, the daughters, the sons, the grandfathers and grandmothers, who are raising grandchildren in this neighborhood, doing the best they can with what they have to try to ensure that their, their young people, their families are living the best quality of life as possible. This is not normal. Facts about last night. Police Commissioner Bethel is going to talk about the police and he's gonna give you all of the data and the facts about that. But I want you to know that throughout the evening in King Sessing, last evening, the Philadelphia Police Department was tracking something that is called a pop-up event. And it was moving from location to location, even in different neighborhoods. Now, a pop-up event, and this is important for parents to know and, and to understand, a pop-up event is an event that is advertised on social media. It's usually a music event where people see an ad um, on something like Instagram, and it tells them where to go. So the location is in the pronouncement on social media. Also last night, the Philadelphia Police Department officers were also dispersing at least one large crowd of juveniles at one point in the evening from a location that was near 60th and King Sessing. At approximately 11.30 p.m., an officer on patrol discovered that there was an individual who was lying on the highway in King Sessing near Salford Street. That individual is no longer with us. Other officers arrived. They discovered eight other individuals were shot and they transported them to the hospital. Again, Police Commissioner Bethel, he's gonna give you the details associated uh, with that activity. In recent days, and we've said this accurately so, we know that homicides are declining here in the city of Philadelphia and they're down 41% and, and shootings are down 41% as well. But if anybody thinks that we can look at those stats and celebrate here in the city of Philadelphia like we have tackled, like we have found the solution, the magic wand to address the culmination of, of, of violence, unnecessary violence in the city, this is no time for us to be celebrating. We are laser focused on prevention intervention and enforcement and it's difficult when you go into the home of a resident who says along with his granddaughter who's 15 years old that this is what has occurred here and what we experience here on a regular basis pastor sean james from salt and light where are you pastor pastor james and Pastor Terry Donald, I'm thinking the Christian Compassion Family. This is a very active community. Uh, Joanna McClinton, a, a speaker, a, a council a, a president. Uh, our, our rec centers now are actually, are actually closed, but not closed just because they're nefariously closed. This is a significant investment to ensure that the people who live here have access to first class amenities that we see in the suburbs, but the community's going to have it right here. But until then, but until then, Mr. President, We are not going to slow down. We don't want to have to see any more mothers, any more fathers, any more families, any more 
you know, relatives, part of the extended uh, of families, of loved ones, have to stand here and say, please pray. Well, we're always going to need prayer. But that, that's, what, that's what we need right now, more than anything. My job to you as mayor and to the families who've been impacted is to tell you about what is standard operating procedure here in the city of Philadelphia. We have a police department that does the policing, and they are expected to do it to the best of their ability, using every resource imaginable. No matter how many people sometimes don't understand or like the fact that we have asked our police department to engage in community policing with zero tolerance for any misuse and or abuse of authority, but it's not either or. We can, should, and will do both in the Parker administration. The next thing, we have a district attorney, and I want to say to G. Lamar Stewart, wherever you are, one of the most well-respected and trusted anti-violence advocates in the city of Philadelphia and pastors, thank you for your leadership in this area, along with our district attorney, Larry Krasner, who prosecutes crime so that people understand you just can't do what you want to do in the city of Philadelphia and think that it is okay and that there will not be any consequences for your actions. Adam Gear, where are you? Here, Come here so people can see you. I wasn't here. I was on the campaign trail trying to become your mayor, but the City Council of Philadelphia, Council President Johnson, Council Member Gaultier, they made a decision that was one that was necessary in our city. They created the position of public safety director for the city of Philadelphia. I, heard, I hope you heard what I just said. A police commissioner who oversees policing, a district attorney who oversees prosecution, and a public safety director whose job it is to coordinate any and every aspect associated with public safety outside of what those two prior responsibilities are with police and or prosecution. We are here. We are not resting. This is not normal, and we won't tolerate it. We're going to use every resource that we can to address it, uh, and that means our intergovernmental partners, both at the local, the state, and the federal level. So when there are Philadelphians who see me from time to time, Mr. President, this happened when we had the mass shooting of students, and they saw us at the police headquarters, and they saw the FBI, and they saw the state police, and they saw the ATF, and they saw every interagency, intergovernmental public safety agency that we could bring together. They saw them standing there. And someone came up to me afterwards and said, isn't this over-policing in the city of Philadelphia? I very diplomatically said to the person, you have a right to your opinion. My job as leader in this city is to ensure that every resource we need to put Philadelphians' public health and safety first is what we will use. There is nothing more important than that. If, if I'm the mayor of this city and I'm afraid to make your public health and safety my number one priority, then I shouldn't be your mayor. And that's why we are here today. We're going to make sure these families, we can't take this loss away. Nobody knows what it's like. You're not walking in their shoes right now. We will pray, but we will use every resource that we have available here in this city to make sure all of the families and all of the victims who have been impacted by this senseless violence, that they have access to the support that they need. I now want to ask our police commissioner, Kevin Bethel, to please come forward. So thank you, thank you, Mayor, for your leadership, and thank you for uh, always understanding you know, what, what needs to be said in these times. And so just, uh, I, I won't get into all of the specific details. I think most of you understand last night at around 1130 uh, as a result of a pop-up uh, party, which I'll get into a little bit more. Uh, we had nine individuals uh, who were shot, and I, and I give my condolences to the family here today uh, as a result of the life loss. Um, the men and women, as you know, July 4th is one of the most challenging days from a deployment for the city of Philadelphia, in particular the police department, because of the events down there and just a large gathering of downtown and then moving people, officers across the city. 
That being said, uh, earlier that last night, the men and women started to see as a result of a pop-up. What is a pop-up? As the mayor indicated, individuals will get on social media and say they're going to have a party. They put it in through their underground network of where they're going to be. This party actually started in North Philadelphia. Uh, the men and women in the police department were able to stop that from a gathering. Uh, and then it would start to move across, ultimately uh, starting coming here to 58th and, and, and King Sesson and Myers. The Philadelphia Police Department, the men and women of the 12th District, worked effectively throughout that period of time. We were getting a number of calls from the community. The men and women were on the ground uh, working to break up that group and that they believed that around 11 o'clock that they effectively were able to uh, get that group to stand down. Unfortunately, uh, later, within another half an hour, uh, through their networking, they were able to reconvene uh, and, and that resulted in an individual coming up in a vehicle, firing multiple rounds from that vehicle, uh, striking the, the individuals on, on the highway. We have made some significant progress in identifying uh, some a vehicle that was involved, and we're working through that process with our detectives now. But let me make it clear. One of the challenges that we're dealing with, as the mayor indicated, is these pop-up events. This, this event, if you know, not too long ago, almost two weeks ago, a similar event organized particularly by the same individuals uh, was over in the park at 33rd Street off the park where we lost, we had five individuals shot then and we lost a student then as well, a young 17 year old a young lady was killed in that regard. We have a duty uh, to stop these activity and we encourage the parents of these kids to engage. But we're also seeing a blend. It's not just juveniles, there are also younger adults uh, and individuals up into their 20s. As a result of the most recent activity, we ac accumulate everything together, 14, uh, 14 shootings of which we've lost, and two additional uh, homicides. Uh, we are going to up step up our enforcement. We're no longer going to allow, we have always tried as an organization to work with our juveniles. We have always tried to make an environment that's safe for them. But at some point, at some point, we're going to have to take proactive action. We are there now. We're going to move into much more enforcement posture as our juveniles surge across the city. Uh, we're going to be working with parents and community members to do that, but we can no longer just allow individuals to come from many of the kids and most of the individuals who are shot here today are not even from this area. There's only two young people who have this as an address. We have kids as far away as the Northeast, all the way up to close to Sheltonham Avenue who are coming across the city. They come into these areas unknowing of what's going on, surging together, and then ultimately, unfortunately, we're having incidents. We've been dealing this with for some time, and we have tried our best to work with these young people. We've engaged our young, our, our, our groups, our young advocates to work with some of these young people, and we're still not seeing that to be effective. And so we will continue to work in a prevention and intervention process. But as the mayor said, my job is to enforce and my job is to work hard to make sure that we don't have other young people who are dying on our streets because of pop-up parties. And so I will again remind parents, we must, must get engaged. If your child is going to a pop-up, there's a strong likelihood there's something negative when that conversion behavior, we learn that from our flash mobs. When young people get together and they have nothing other than getting together, then these are oftentimes the, the negative things stem from that. And so we have a lot of work to do, but well, we continue to accept our charge from the mayor uh, to work hard to make sure we reduce. But can I also end this? I wanna give, the community has done a phenomenal job in this area. We have seen a 68% reduction in the violence in this area. And that's because of a lot of the men and women who are standing around me today. And so we cannot lose track of the work that the men and women in the community has done to reduce the violence. You didn't cause this last night. Someone brought individuals into our area and then someone saw an opportunity to take advantage of that. But community, I just encourage you, keep the work. Yes. Keep doing what you're doing. What you're doing is working. And we will not let anyone tear us down and stop the charge that many of the folks, Doc is here and others are here, to be able to keep the work of our community. So I just want to thank you and, and I'll pass it off to Adam Gear. Adam Gear. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I want to start where were the commissioner just left off, right? These folks who are standing behind me, the community, these community leaders, some of them who I'm meeting for the first time today have been doing this work in this community for years and years. And as the commissioner said, things are getting better, all right? And I look forward to when my brother, Commissioner Bethel apprehends the cowards. And it is a cowardly act. Yes, it is. I just wanna say that. Yes. Sleep tight. Okay? I look forward to the moment when Commissioner Bethel informs us they, they made an apprehension in this cowardly act. 
In the meantime, my office is going to do whatever we can to support this community. We are here. We are on the ground. Our victim advocate is here. Yes. We will be walking around. If anyone needs anything, please let us know. We have services available to you. We're starting with cleaning the sidewalks. Okay? This is something that was funded by city council, the mayor's vision to not have our residents have to deal with the visceral trauma of what happens in our neighborhoods. So right now, they're starting with dealing with that visceral trauma, cleaning up the sidewalks. I saw a woman come down with a bucket of bleach to do that, told her, go back in, go back in your home. We're going to deal with that yeah. for you. So while we're doing, we're going to try and fix these car windows. We're going to try and get money to fix that. Yeah. That is available. Yeah. Let us know. And in the meantime, we also want to try and fix if they'll allow and help with the trauma that they're dealing with, right, in their hearts. That is also our work to do, and we are here to support that. So I'm going to keep it short. Thank you for your support to the community. Thank you, thank you, thank you to the family. We will keep working tirelessly. Thank you. District, District Attorney Krasner, come on up. Council President is coming after you, sir. All right. Thank you. I will be brief. Tim Massaqua is here. Wave your hand, Tim. It wasn't even a couple days ago when we were doing a vigil led by Pastor Sean, which was about the mass shooting that occurred on July 3rd, a year ago. And Tim said something at that vigil that I think should be repeated, which is, the healing begins when the community comes together, all right? The healing begins when the community comes together. It is never all about what's government gonna do for you, it is all about how can government support the community in leading because that is what they do in these circumstances. I'm here to tell you that the, the approximately 650 people who work at the DA's office, they were here last night, they were here this morning. We have our CARES team here who reach out to the families of homicide victims in the first 45 to 60 days. And when these cameras gonna go away, we, and I know some of my elected friends as well, we are going to be going door to door, canvassing, talking to people, because it is the community that has done so much to reduce gun violence. Yes, it's government as well, but it is that community, and they need us, and we need to be here to support them on their timetable and in their way, because that is how this gets done. Yes, of course, my office has been available and will be available to help with all the investigative needs that the police, FBI, ATF, anyone else may have. Yes, of course, we're going to bring just charges and they're going to be the appropriately very severe consequences that apply in a case like this. But I want to make sure that we do not forget where these elected people's power comes from. It comes from the people and that we do not forget that it is prevention, which is primarily done by people in the community, and it is modern law enforcement, which is on the governmental side, that coming together can make this difference. Thank you very much. Well, first and foremost, I want to uh, thank our mayor, and I've been in office since 2011. This isn't the first homicide in Southwest Philadelphia. It isn't the first shooting that take place, took place in Southwest Philadelphia. It is the first time that we've been joined by our mayor actually coming That's out right. and talking to the actual neighbors. And so That's right. I do want to personally just say thank you right, for your dedication, and most importantly, your hands-on approach. Um, and when I woke up this morning, my phone has several text messages right, regarding the shooting that took place. And then I get a phone call from G. Lamar Stewart regarding the work that our district attorney was setting out to do. Then I get a call from Sincere from the mayor's office talking about the work that her office is about to do. And also my team was focusing on, we do these peace, not guns, public safety walks for the sole reason of making sure that these neighbors Yes. These neighbors in this neighborhood, yes. they have to feel a sense of healing, right? Because hurt people hurt people. And when you're dealing with a neighborhood that's dealing with trauma, right, that's when you have the retaliation approach. Mm. That's when you have the revenge approach. That's when you have that get back mentality. Mm -hmm. And so we're out here in the effort today to do nothing but go door to door, talking to the neighbors and let them know that, number one, they will not be hostages inside their own homes. Come on. But also that as a district council person of this particular area, working in partnership with our mayor, working in partnership with our district attorney, we have the second most powerful person in the state of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. our House Speaker, Joanna McClinton, yeah. my, council, my council colleague, Councilman Jamie Gardier, and also see 
it's not even her district as well, State Representative Regina Young, who's out here with us today, just to let them know that we're working together. That's right. Collectively, to not only reduce, but eliminate this senseless gun violence that we're seeing here in the city of Florida. We should not be kicking off our summer. Come on. We should not be kicking off our summer. And to be quite frank, a lot of us left vacation to come back today, right? And so, but nothing changes if we don't change. That's right. And when I say we don't change, I mean us coming together, breaking out our silos, right? And so we're gonna be going door to door with the neighborhood groups that are out here to make sure that these residents know that we're here to support them. And I also just wanna say this, right? I'm waiting for the day when we do get a chance to get a call from our police commissioner, hmm. our district attorney, and say that, listen, we caught the culprit that did this, and we're prosecuting him to the full extent of the law. And here's why I say this. I'm a different elected official, right? I'm born and raised in the streets of South Philadelphia. You don't shoot kids. You shouldn't shoot nobody at all, right? But not only the young man who's about to graduate, right? But you also had babies. So the guy who pulled the trigger, he cared less mm -hmm. who else got killed, mm -hmm. in regards to who he was shooting at. So yes, I'm one of them guys that do support prosecution to the fullest of the law. We could talk about what happened in his childhood and how he needed a prevention program, but tell this family that. Come on. Oh, oh. Talk to the family, because the family don't want to hear that. So. That's where I'm at. We're going to do door to door. I want to thank the mayor again, the other elected officials from being out here today. But it's about us coming together as a, as a neighborhood, as a community to make sure that we reduce and eliminate this census gun violence that's taking place here in the city of Philadelphia, and particularly my district in Southwest Philadelphia. We rely on our Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for a great deal of assistance and support. We have our Speaker of the House, Joanna McClinton here. Speaker McClinton. Representative Young, can you join me? We just celebrated the 4th of July, and for those of us who live in and serve Southwest Philadelphia, it wasn't even 366 days ago that we started 4th of July down at 56 and Chester Avenue, looking at blood on our streets, looking at blood from senseless killings of people who were coming home thinking they're about to celebrate the holiday in 2023, can't even get out their cars, and children trying to see what was happening getting gunned down. And here we are a year later. No, we're not at 56 in Chester, but understand we just blocks away. We are blocks away from where that horrible incident happened. But I think our council president said one thing that's key, because it was just the DA and I out there last year on the 4th of July. But today, we have our mayor here with us. Yeah. We have our police commissioner here with us. We have community and faith leaders here with us. We have folks who've been working since last night with us. And we are standing together to say our children will not die in these that's streets. Right. Our children will live. Our children will have a future. Our children will not be afraid in the daytime and in the nighttime and they will not be able to come outside and celebrate holidays safely that is not our reality in this community and it will not be our reality in this city we are going and we will do better starting now our final speaker to close us out today where's pastor sean james pastor james so let me more than anything else emphasize how important it is to Southwest Philadelphia that the mayor is here today. Amen. You hear this, I've been in Southwest Philadelphia for years now, and I can tell you, I can count on this hand, the number of times that the mayor of Philadelphia has shown up in this community for a situation like this. The solidarity that we sense Amen. around this situation hopefully breeds a new day of understanding just how important this area is to those who live, work, and worship in Southwest Philadelphia. Amen. Let me also say this, we need every church, every mosque, every school in Southwest to get active right now in providing opportunities for our young people during the summer. Summer programs, community groups, anything that you can do to make sure that they have positive places that they can go. Also, please right now make sure that if your young person needs to talk to somebody, Salt and Light Church, Church of Christian Compassion, King Sessing Hills uh, Resiliency Center, we have therapists available for free that I want to talk to the young people. Trauma 
builds, trauma multiplies. We must do something for our young people to break the scourge of trauma on their life. Prayer is wonderful, but you can have Jesus and a therapist, amen? And so let's make sure that our young people have the therapy that they need to help them to get through this situation, amen? amen. Thank, Thank you all. You. Police Commissioner Bethel and Public Safety Director Gear and District Attorney Krasner and Keir, we will take any questions. Can we have a moment of silence first for the family? Amen. This young man, his aunt, and some of his family members are members of Salt and Light. Uh, we will make sure that everything is taken care of for them uh, financially during this time. Uh, we will make sure that we honor this young man properly and the work that he was trying to do in the community. Um, and then likewise, please, please continue to pray their strength. Amen? Uh, these situations are never easy. And I know a lot of people think that we get used to this stuff in our community. We do not. Every murder hurts, especially when it's a child. Uh, we will never get used to this, but we are going to continue to do everything we can to stem this time. Yes. The resources that you heard the pastor just referenced, they will be available because the most important action is what happens when these cameras go off. Amen. Okay, and we're gonna make sure that that support is there. Uh, if you have any questions for us before we hit the doors, because that's where we wanna go now. We wanna go hit the doors and hit every block that we can. Any questions? I don't have a question, but I have something to say as a community leader uh, to all the Southwest community organizations that's out here. Keep working, like the commissioner said, keep doing what y'all doing, keep putting in the efforts that y'all doing to help the community and just keep building. So don't let this situation, which is a sad situation, make us feel like we're not doing nothing. You know what I mean? Because we wasn't able to control that. So everybody keep putting the work that they putting in and just stay together. Like the mayor say, one Philly, let's, let's keep going, y'all. Stay together. Yep. All right? yep. Thank you all. We're going to go hit the your question. Can you clarify whether this was a targeted shooting? Let me have, well, I want uh, Gear and Bethel to come up front here. And the district attorney is here. It, it, it's too early in the process to know if it's a, a targeted. We're working through that, working through our investigation now. Um, you mentioned having a more proactive approach to policing uh, events with young people in the future. Uh, can you talk about what was the approach last night? Was that well, I mean, I'm a consistent, well. Mm. Cool. cool. No, I mean, listen, we have constantly been asked to how we work with our young people. Many of you know I come from a space of working, trying our work our best not to criminalize the behavior of adolescents, right? And so we know, even going back to my time decades ago working with our, our flash mobs, that many of these kids have no records, not looking for engaging criminal behavior, but once they converge, these igniters happen. And so we have trained our men and women to break them down into smaller packages and then disperse them. That has been our goal. It frustrates the heck out of us, and it takes time, take us hours to get that done. But we have found that to be an effective strategy. However, most recently, with the increase in violence, we didn't see this level of violence related to it. Yes, we'll have some fights. Yes, we'll have some activity. But now that we're seeing a result of shootings and murders as a result of it, that now changes our tenor and changes our deployment. We're working through that the different strategy now. And so that is the model we have. We do it all the time, working with our young people, breaking them down into smaller groups and dispersing them. And that's how we've been doing our template. That has worked up to now and over the last month very effectively, but we're now seeing that that strategy may not be working and we're going to have to make some adjustments. Commissioner, does the department have any footage of this incident? No, we're looking through, obviously we have a number of crime cameras in the area, as well as other video footage that we'll be uh, looking to acquire, but we don't have any of that to share. We're going through that investigation now. All right, thank you, ma'am. Are you thinking just one shooter, multiple shooters? Do you know that at this point? Uh, we don't know that at this point. We definitely know one shooter, uh, but we're looking to see if there was other uh, shooters as well as we go through an investigation. Council President uh, Johnson, I'm going to ask you to come over here. Yeah. Councilwoman Gautier, Councilwoman Gautier is here. I want you to document the dollar amount that is being invested and what is the actual work that is being done right now and what are the neighborhood-based community organizational programs that our young people are actively engaged in in this area? Absolutely. Well, first and foremost, the rebuild project 
this 30 plus million to build a brand new recreation center for our young people. That's first and foremost. We're also sharing resources and support with King Sussing Rec, which is also being built, but also making sure that we're partnering with organizations such as Philadelphia Anti-Drug, Anti-Violence Network. We have ODAT, which is the, which is the office, whatever ODAT stands for, but ODAT is out. But, but, but let, me, let me touch base with the neighborhood groups who are here that we've been working with. So we have the fathership program that takes millions, that takes young people off the streets in Southwest Philadelphia. We have Owen Chuck, Big Duke, come on up front. Because most of the groups that are here, it's great that they're here, but when the cameras leave, they're right, still here. So I'm gonna let the people that's actually doing the work talk from their own personal experience on the work that they're doing. Do. But the important, the important thing for Philadelphians to notice is to not allow anyone to use as an excuse because that that is what becomes extremely frustrating there is a, sometimes there is messaging to say that the work that is being done in the neighborhood is if it's non-existent and that is not the case in this community no not not at all not for not for, not at all and also i think as was mentioned that's a pop-up event and i think that's the part that the commissioner is trying to really clarify to everybody right this wasn't an organic neighborhood event, right? But at the end of the day, nobody should be picking up a gun, rather it's a pop-up event, rather it's a block party, right? Rather it's just individuals going to and from homes, their home. Enough is enough, right? And we have to continue making sure that we're doing a violence prevention work. Mm -hmm. we, we, we just passed the budget, mm -hmm. 30, what, 30 million yes. for boots on the ground organizations, wow. right? But also, we're only effective as, as us working together and making sure that young people are not picking up guns in the first place. And so it could be a pop-up, but it can also be you going to and from your store or from your home and something may happen. And so we're going to continue to do everything that we can to make sure our young people are safe. They have safe places to get involved in things that are positive and at the end of the day, have a neighborhood of peace, not guns. Right. And So um, that's like awesome. So when did you like get the car, or where did you find it? If you can say yet, or well, we won't we won't get into the specifics okay. of that. Uh, it's still early in the investigation. Yes, uh, we believe we have a car that may be uh, used in, in the uh, incident that happened last night. Uh, but again, I don't want to get ahead of our investigators. Uh, we have a significant number of men and women in our investigator team who are working, you know, diligently to, to determine all of those facts. But right now, that's about the preliminary information I can provide. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, do you know who organized the pop-up event? Um, we do not know specifically who organized it. We believe we may have, but we're, we're not prepared to share that at this time. Mm -hmm. Any additional information you can release about the victim? No, no, I would not uh, do that uh, in respect of the family is here today. Um, I would not do that, but uh, um, it's an unfortunate incident. Again, my condolences to the family. The other eight uh, individuals who were are all uh, appear to be in stable condition, and so we're thankful uh, that it didn't turn out to be even more people who lost their lives last night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't know that at this point. Uh, this is uh, the incident that we had in the park where the individuals were in the park that I described that happened on the 14th of June, uh, but we don't know. All right, so we'll wrap it up here. I know the mayor uh, talked one, about, where's, oh, you want somebody? Uh, two, one, one. Two, two. Yeah, two, one, one. Let me just say this again. Uh, we hope what you've seen demonstrated here on today is that the neighborhood, community-based organizations, spiritual uh, institutions, grassroots community-based leaders, they are present here on today. There are also citywide organizations like Emir, mm -hmm. Every Murder is Real, Shante Love and her team, they are here. They do the work, the counseling, the therapy. Again, when all of these cameras go away. So let no one say that we in the city of Philadelphia are not trying to use a coordinated approach. No more silos, this organization here, that organization here. There is a menu of options. If you are a grandmother, a grandfather, or a parent, or you're raising a young person in the city and you're saying, I don't even know what they need, but I know that they need to be plugged into something, we want you to call 211. 
Call 211. There is a representative who can speak with you to talk about what are the organizations available in the communities in which you live that we can plug our young people uh, in. But our job is to be connectors. That is what government is supposed to do, connect you to resources that you need. And that's what we're doing our best to do uh, now. So thank you all so very much for being present.